All right, Jace here at Saguchi Honda, and I'm inside a brand new 2020 Accord LX. And with the new restrictions getting put in place in Rhode Island, with Gina Raimondo putting in the, the Rhode Island pause for two weeks, we're not going to be able to do deliveries in person. So I'm here with all the Accord trims on the lot, making video walkthroughs so that we can still have deliveries virtually. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do with customers on a delivery is fix their side mirrors. So you have your left and right controller here. So if you flick it to the left, you can then control the left mirror by using the D-pad. And if you flick it to the right, then you'll then be able to control the mirror over there. And once your side mirrors are all set, you can just put this back in the middle. And then from here to fix your seat, you have the little levers on the side here. So this pumps your seat up, this pumps your seat down, and then this lever moves the back of your seat back or forward. And then on the bottom of the of your seat, you have a little latch that you can pull. And then from there, you can move your seat up and down. And down here on the left side of the car, you have the trip button. So if you tap the trip button, it'll then cycle you through the trips on the dash. You have trip A and B and then your total mileage. And if you want to reset a trip, what you have to do is once you're on, so I'm on trip B, if I want to reset trip B, all you have to do is hold down the trip button and then you see it goes zero, zero, so now your trip's been reset. And the, this little scroll wheel here controls your brightness of the dash. So while I'm messing around with this, you should see the brightness go up and down as I'm moving this. So if it's kind of hard to see, you can use, uh, move the brightness up. And then the button below the trip buttons here, this button with the, uh, the little circle around the car, if you tap that, that puts you into uh, the Honda sensing part of the uh, instrument panel. So here you have your road departure mitigation and you, see, you can see the sensors that it uses will light up. And what road departure mitigation does essentially is that if you ever start veering off the road, then it'll vibrate the steering wheel and give you a little uh, alert in the instrument panel, just saying that you're kind of veering off the road. So, or if you ever fell asleep at the wheel or anything like that. And then the bottom one is the collision mitigation braking system. And you can see the sensor blinking for the, the front sensor. The, the collision mitigation braking system is so if someone stops short in front of you and you can't react to brake, then the car will automatically brake itself. And the way that you scroll through these is by using the scroll wheel here on the wheel. So if I want to scroll up and down, I use the scroll wheel. And then if I want to disable the road departure mitigation, what I have to do is push the scroll wheel in. So if I push the scroll wheel in, it turns the road departure mitigation off. And then you can see the flashing lights turn gray instead of green. And then to return them on, all you have to do is tap the scroll wheel again. It turns back on. So if you ever wanna turn a setting off, you can do that there. Okay, and also down here, you have your vehicle stability assist button. So that's essentially, if you ever start hydroplaning or if you drive over black ice and your car loses traction, it's a braking mechanism that helps you regain traction. Uh, it's always on and to turn it off, you have to press and hold down on it for a while to turn it off. Here you have your trunk button. So if you press and hold this down for a couple seconds, it'll open your trunk. And then down there, you have your head latch. Okay, so here on the left side of the steering wheel, you have your volume plus and minus button. So if I tap the volume plus button, you can see the radio volume go up. And if I tap the minus button, you can see the radio volume go down. And then at this point, the home button, if you tap the home button, it will put you into the home screen for the instrument panel there. And then from here, if you use the scroll wheel, so if I scroll down, you can scroll through some apps. And then for uh, a couple apps that I like to show customers, so the way that you select an app is you have to push the scroll wheel in like that. Push it in, and then from there, it'll put you into the app. So this is just your trip computer. It shows you the range, your, uh, the gas that you have in your car. It shows you the average fuel miles per gallon you're getting. And then it shows you the trip at the bottom. And if you use the scroll wheel again, you can cycle through trip A and B. Then if I hit the home button now, it'll just bring us back to that main screen. And then another app that I like to show people is the maintenance. So here's your oil life. Your oil life is given to you by a combination of two things. One being the quality of oil that's in your car. So if it's synthetic or anything like that. And then also the, the last oil change that took place in the time that has passed since. So it uses those two factors to give you an oil life percentage. And then from there, uh, once your oil life hits 15%, you're gonna be due for an oil change. 
and uh, a little wrench will pop up, pop up on the dash somewhere with a little code next to it. And if you go and check your oil life, then it's probably gonna be at 15%. And if I come back to the steering wheel, you have these little skip buttons. So right now, let's say we're on 92.3, and let's say I hit the right skip button. Instead of having to press the button, it'll automatically change the preset. So at this point, I can cycle through the presets without having to go to the steer, uh, to go to the radio. And then the source button here will change the radio source without you, you having to go to the radio. So you have FM one, FM two, and then AM. And then here you, uh, you can answer calls hands-free once you get your phone paired, decline calls hands-free, and then also hang up. And then the voice talk button will put you into Honda's voice command prompt system. So once you tap this button, it'll put you into the, the Honda command prompt uh, screen here. And then from there, it's gonna list all the commands that you can say to the car. And then you're also gonna, to be able to call someone hands-free, you're gonna have to voice tag them. And I'm gonna show that later on in the video, but essentially you're gonna have to go into your contacts once your phone is paired, go into your speed dial list, add someone to that speed dial list. And then from there, you're gonna have to voice tag them. And what that means is you're gonna have to state their name to the car twice to be able to say, you know, call Susie or call Sally or whoever you wanna call. So you're gonna have to go into your speed dial list, go into your phone book, select a contact and then voice tag them. Then on the right side of the steering wheel here, you have all your Honda sensing. So uh, on the right side, you have like your adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping assist. So the way that you use any of that is, is by tapping the main button here. So if I tap the main button, you'll see the ACC and LKS lettering come up on the dash there. And if I tap the main button again, it takes it away. So that's how you turn the systems on and off. And then at this point, the systems are on, but they're in a standby mode. So what you have to do is tap the lane button. So it brings up a set of lanes in the dash. And you can see how the, the lanes are kind of blank in the middle. And once you start driving from 45 to 90 miles an hour, you'll then be able to set an adaptive cruise control speed. So what that means is you can set a distance between you and the car in front of you. And if that car in front of you breaks within a certain distance that you have set, then your car will automatically break itself to keep that distance the same. And the way that you set that distance is through the low speed follow button here. So if I tap this button, it brings up a set of bars in the dash there, and you should see them. There's four bars, and the more I tap it, the lower it goes, and I'm on two bars, I'm on one bar. And every bar stands for a car length that's between you and the car in front of you. So obviously with customers, I like to leave it on four bars initially because that's the safest setting. Um, and then like we talked about, once someone breaks within that four bar or four car length distance, then your car will automatically break itself. And then uh, once you see those lines fill in white, once you hit a speed above 45 miles an hour, you'll be able to hit the set button. And then from this point, there's a couple things that I like to talk about the Honda sensing. So um, once you start, once you have the lanes pulled up and you're driving over 25 miles an hour, then the lane keeping assist will activate and you know kind of be helping while you while you drive. And the one thing that I like to talk about the lane keeping assist is that. Um, once you set the adaptive cruise control speed, the lane keeping assist is going to be trying its best to keep you in the center of the lane. So if you go into either a curve or a bend or anything like that, you're going to feel the power steering input on the wheel. So I, I just like to let customers know that, that the steering wheel is actually going to move itself. You know, and some customers could get scared by that or, you know, not feel completely in control. So I just like, I just like to let them know that. So if, if they're ever driving and they feel, you know, they feel a little scared, they can just hit the main button that turns all the systems off. Okay, so the way that you use the radio, here you have your volume knob. So from here you can turn the volume up and down. On this side you have your tuner, which will change stations for you. And then at this point, th these are all your channel presets. And if you ever wanted to make a preset, so let's say you wanted to listen to 92.3, that's a popular station around here. To make that one of your channel presets, what you have to do is press and hold down on one until you hear the beep, you see the 92.3 pop up, you see the number one pop up. And then on the left side here, this is how you change your radio source. So if you tap radio, you could change between FM2, AM, and FM1. And then here, once you get your phone paired, you'll be able to 
switch over to the Bluetooth connection to be able to play something over the Bluetooth. And then to go back to the radio, you just tap the radio again. Okay, so to pair a Bluetooth phone, what you have to do is hit this little phone call button here. And then you use the little tuner here to go left and right. And if you click in for yes, and then make sure your Bluetooth is on and discoverable on your phone. So what that means is the Bluetooth setting has to be turned on and you have to be on the Bluetooth page in your settings. And then it's gonna search for your Preparing phone. Preparing process requires operation of a Bluetooth device. For proper system function, a compatible Bluetooth device is required. Please. Okay, so once that you click pair on your phone and then click that you wanna sync your contacts, you should get a screen like that saying that your connection has been successful. So at this point, if you wanted to set someone up to be able to call them hands-free, what you're gonna to have to do is click this little phone call button here, go to your speed dial, and then from here you have your 20 speed dial entries. So to be able to call someone hands-free, you have to click add new, go to your phone book. So it's gonna import my phone book. Once it's done. So once it's done, you can then select a letter that you want to pair someone with. So if I wanted to bank, so if you I know, Bay Coast, Coast, that's their number. Uh, so at this point, if you wanted to voice tag them, you would click yes. And then what the system's going to prompt you to do is, it's going to prompt you to hit the voice talk button over here and state the contact's name. So once you hit this button, you'll say Bay Coast or whoever you want to call. And then the system's going to prompt you to do it one more time. And then once you have it voice tagged, you'll then be able to call, call that contact hands-free. So then from that point, you'll, from any time that you hit the voice talk button, you can then say call that contact that you synced. Okay, so down here you have your AC settings. So to change the fan speed, you can just move, move this scroll up and down. And then from here, you can control the temperature. Control the temperature. And this side, you can control that temperature. And then at this point, if you hit push sync, that'll sync the temperatures to the driver's side. So at that point, the driver can control both sides. Here, this lets you recirculate air within the cabin, or if you want fresh air to come in, you can leave it unlit up. Here you have your modes. You have your front defrosters and rear defrosters. And then here you have your AC on off. Okay, and then down here by the shifter, you have your USB port and your 12 volt power outlet for your cigarette lighter. And then here you have your econ button. So if I tap econ, it says econ on. And at this point, what econ does is you lose a couple horsepower in the engine, but you gain a couple miles per gallon. So it's great for city driving and it's not as effective on the highway because you need the extra horsepower on the highway. Here you have your parking brake. So the way that you use this is you have to have your foot on the brake. So I just put my foot on the brake and the way you activate it is you just pull up on it. See the little red light. So now your parking brake is active and to deactivate it, just keep your foot on the brake and push down. And then the brake hold. So if I tap brake hold. So to enable the brake hold button, you have to have your seatbelt on and you have to be in drive. And essentially what the brake hold does is is that if you're in like Boston or Providence traffic or anything like that, then essentially if you enable the brake hold, even though you're in drive, you'll still be able to brake to a stop and then take your foot off the brake and your car won't roll forward. So it's kind of helpful to relieve your knee and your leg of the constant stop and go traffic.